Hey y'all, Sasyata here. I'm a Pokemon ROM hacker, and I'm going to show you guys today how you can add dynamic cameras into your Pokemon games. So if you want to have cool things that look like this, like this, or even like this, then stick around for this video. I'm going to show you how to do it, and it's going to be super easy and straightforward. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so today you're going to need a couple things, the first of which is going to be DSPRE. So if you have not downloaded DSPRE before, then please do that. I have a tutorial on how to get that set up. You will also need to use uh, PDSMS, which is Pokemon DS Map Studio. I also have a tutorial on how to get that set up. Please watch those first or else this tutorial will not make sense to you. But for now, let's open up uh, Pokemon DS Map Studio uh, 2.2. I'm using Ad Astra's Fork. You can use the regular one that's found on the GitHub. Either will work just fine. So today I wanna show you part of uh, some of the dynamic camera work that I'm using. I'm going to show you exactly how I set it up so that you can replicate it in your own hacks and use your own creativity to kind of uh, make your own dynamic cameras. All right, so first of all, you're going to have to have a map already somewhat made. So here's a model map I made. It's pretty straightforward. And what I want to have happen is I want the player's camera to look top down when I'm walking up the stairs. Otherwise, the player's going to be completely covered uh, by this mountain in the way. So I want the camera to look straight down here. And then as I come up these stairs, I want it to rotate back to normal. And then I want it to look straight through this alleyway here when I am coming to the left. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is click on the top down view. And then we're going to want to click first on this button here. This edits the BH BDHC plates. So you'll notice that I already have these done. Um, I have gone over how to do this in my PDSMS tutorial. We, just, we just wanna make sure that these are already done first, all right? Then we're going to want to go into the BDH cam editor. And so you'll see that I already have some plates set up here. Let me walk you through what these things do, and then I'll show you how to add them in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this plus button right here, and this will add a, one of these plates into existence. And we're going to drag it around to wherever we want it. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell us where on the map our dynamic camera is going to happen. So when I walk on certain tiles, the camera is going to change angle. So for this plate in particular, let's go down and look at the two cameras I've added. So you always, after you select the plate you want right here, which is plate number zero, you're gonna come down here and click on your camera parameters. You can add one if you want. I already have my two added. And you can select what type of camera they are. So the ones that are colored are the ones you're gonna to wanna to use. These other ones are not really used very much. You can do everything you really need to with the first six. Uh, in particular, um, well, not these ones. So regardless of what camera type you're doing, uh, say for instance camera Y, there's always a first and a second value. The first value is always on for an X dependent plate on the left, and the second value is always going to be on the right. For a Y position dependent, it's going to be first value is on the bottom, and second value is going to be on the top. So just keep that in mind going forward. So let's look at camera Y. So camera Y tells you where in the sky, basically, the camera is in the Y direction. And so the Y is going to be uh, your up and down coordinate, and your Z is gonna be your forward and backward. X is gonna be your left and right. So camera Y, what's gonna happen here is when I'm all the way to the left, on uh, I'm just gonna have a normal camera. So zero refers to no shifts. Uh, the second value is going to be 4, so all the way at the right, the camera is going to be moving up 4, so I'm going to get a more of a top-down view. And camera Z is going to be my other camera parameter that I've added. Um, I am going to be normal at the far left point, so basically once I've reached the top of the stairs, the camera is going to be returning to normal. Now on the far right, so when I'm in this valley here, I want the camera Z to be shifted uh, back a little bit so that I'm looking straight down on top of myself. So you can always check by, by playing animation here and it gives you kind of an idea of what's happening. And so you'll see the camera is shifting forward and down more, Ooh. and there's the little guy. So this uh, preview is not always super accurate, so you'll notice that it doesn't look totally straight down, but in game it's going to look totally straight down. You should really only use this animation preview as sort of a general idea of what's going on. Um, you can also do some fun stuff with works only at Z, so this will give you a certain height that this is going to work at. For instance, I have a special plate right here, plate number 5, that is going to rotate you down and forward. 
Um, and it's only going to work at Z equals 1, and so when I play this, you'll notice this is only going to work when I'm underneath this bridge. I don't want it to happen on the top bridge. So you can choose where you want these things to happen at what height. So now that I've shown you how to set this up, I'll show you how it looks in game. So I'm going to go over to this little valley here that I just showed you, and when I come in, I'm going to be looking straight down. So this is exactly what you want. And you notice when I walk up and down, nothing's going to change because this is only dependent on left to right movement. And so when I walk up like this, it's going to transition to looking normal. And so this is my normal camera angle right here. Okay, the next thing that we want to learn how to do is how to transition the camera to look more in front so that you're facing straight at the player instead of top down. So what you don't want to do here is use both camera Y and target Y. And so that's going to rotate the camera down and in front of you. So in this plate, you'll see uh, plate number one, I'll have this transition. This is again axe dependent, so on the far right, I'm going to have a zero parameter for both of these. On the far left, I'm going to have the new parameter. So you want to think about this as a smooth transition, so as I walk from right to left, the camera is going to be coming down. So camera Y is going to go from zero on the right to negative five, and this is gonna shift the camera down. Target Y is also going to change um, how up and down. So the camera Y is gonna change the rotation, and target Y is gonna change like where exactly in space it's looking at, which is what it means by targeting. And so it's actually gonna shift the camera um, up one as we go. And you'll see that if you make this negative, it, it looks pretty bad. So I like to just change it to one. You don't really have to, but it's just a personal preference. Then in this middle region, um, I will have this plate be completely uniform from left to right. So you'll see my first and second value are the same here, and they're the same here. You'll notice that over here, this one is just going to maintain uniform. And I'm just taking this parameter, negative five, from this uh, number one plate and this uh, target Y as one from this other plate one. So you just want to make it go from zero to one, stay at one, and then go from one to zero. Otherwise it'll look really weird. Let me show you how this one looks in game. All right, so this next one, we're going to be walking forward uh, through um, this front facing view. And it looks kind of cool because I can see into the background behind these plasma grunts. And then as I walk past them this way, the camera just returns to normal. So I can transition it to more front facing and I can transition it back to the way it normally is. So the last thing we're going to want to do is look at how we can rotate the camera left and right, say with an X parameter change. So you'll notice over here, I have my plate that is Y dependent now. So as I move uh, up and down, my camera is going to change. So you'll notice this little six plate right here. This one is going to be where the transition happens. And so camera X is going to tell me how I'm rotating. So the first value, I have no rotation. And then as I move from top to bottom here, my second value is going to be two, which means I'm rotating to the right. So positive numbers for camera X are going to rotate you to the right and uh, negative are going to rotate you to the left. All right, so this last one is just going to be a very small X rotation. So as I walk down, you'll notice that it shifts slightly to the right so that I can kind of see the side of the cliff. Normally the cliffs look kind of flat like this and there's not a whole lot of detail to them. But in this case, you can actually see they look kind of fun. Um, and then as I come back here, it's just going to rotate back. And so it's always important to make sure that you have these transition tiles. Otherwise, you're going to just randomly snap to a different camera position. It's going to look very jarring. All right, so now that we have all of these plates done, um, there's a lot more stuff that you can do with these. It's really up to you to play around with them and see what you can do. Um, it's pretty intuitive and it's very easy to test out in the game. I mean, as long as it looks good, you've done a good job, right? So what you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna go up to um, this save button here. You can just close out of that other editor, hit save, and you'll notice that this map right here is 1011. And so that's the coordinate of the uh, BDH cam routine that you want to implement when you insert the map. So what you're going to want to do is open DSPRE, and you're going to want to open up whatever ROM you're working on and unpack it. Then you're going, if you are using Pokemon Platinum version, you're going to have to use this ROM toolbox, and you're going to need to click on Expand ARM9 and then implement the dynamic cameras. And so fortunately people in the community have already made this uh, readily implementable by just clicking a few buttons, which is 
super awesome. Uh, thank you to uh, Mike Lan for doing the dynamic cameras, and thank you to Ad Astro for getting this implemented into DS Peary. And of course, thank you to Trefendo for the DS Map Studio. Without those three, this would not be possible. If you are using HD Engine, don't click on this. Uh, just do it through HG Engine instead. So we're gonna go to whatever map we're, we want to insert this over. And so for me, this is called Fall Forward. And I'm gonna go into my matrix editor. I'm going to go into my map files. And I personally know exactly where this is. It's right here. So I'm gonna double click on this map file and it'll take a second to unpack if this is the first time you've opened this ROM. And boom, there you'll see. I've already implemented this uh, map terrain already and I've already implemented the BDH cam stuff, but I'm just gonna show you how I would do it if I hadn't already. So we're gonna go over to terrain data and you're gonna click on this button, import BDHC. And so now you're gonna to wanna to go into wherever you have stored um, this particular uh, map output. And so depending on whatever folder that is for you, um, just go look in that folder. And the important thing is that this is 1011. And so I'm going to look for my Iridium region uh, 10 comma 11. Now this is the part you have to be careful about. So there's two files here, the BDHC and the BDH cam. Uh, if you want to not use the dynamic camera for whatever reason, just use the BDHC, but if you want to also include the camera movement, then just use BDH cam. Um, the BDH cam includes both the plates that you're going to walk on and the camera changes. So for us, we want to click on the BDH cam. So I've already done it, so I'm just going to close this out, but basically just click that import and make sure you hit save after, otherwise it won't save your changes. And then once you're done editing your ROM, just click save and save it as whatever ROM you want to. If you're using a HeartGold engine, uh, you're going to want to go into your um, HD engine directory. You're going to want to look at include. You're going to want to look at config. Okay, so this should open up the config file. Um, and so what we want to do now is look at define BDH camera routine. I think this is uh, implemented by default, but if not, just make sure this line right here is uncommented out, and then build the ROM with HD Engine, and then that thing should be able to be used with BDH again. All right, so I hope that helped you. I hope your game now looks awesome with dynamic cameras. Uh, I've been Sasiata, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Have a great day.